the composers and here we are sitting with John Fedchuk who happens to be my favorite husband and uh, produced the new record and wrote two tunes for it. So we're going to be here chatting about those two tunes. John, the first tune you uh, arranged for the group uh, was Twinkle by Tori Amos and um, if nobody knows, Twinkle was on an album in the 90s that Tori Amos, this uh, piano prodigy slash singer, writer, composer, um, put out. But it's very sparse. She just sings and plays a couple notes on the on the piano. And then I said, John, uh, please arrange this for four trombones and rhythm section and please feature yourself. So uh, talk about that. Well, first of all, I knew that I had to stay close to the original as, at least as far as the melody went, because the harmony was so simple, I knew that's where I could have a little bit of a leeway. Um, but the melody is pretty strict uh, throughout the whole arrangement. It's really it's kind of exactly the way she sang it. challenge was trying to find harmonies update the harmony because really she's kind of just tinkling on the piano and it's one two or two chords the whole way through so and you changed the key too right I changed the key to make it more suitable for a trombone and uh, and the harmony thing I, I basically just took the it was all based on the major scale really the tunes all the major scale so I just try to find ways to kind of explore the different modes of the major scale and the depending on the melody notes, minor scales, to, to kind of get some more uh, rich colors and more jazz sounds into it. So there's a lot more harmony on this than there is on the original, if you ever listen to that. Um, and then I, I just knew you wanted it to sound like the original. Yeah. <laughs> so it's, it's hard to change something that someone wants unchanged. So I hope I was successful in doing that. Uh, so I, I just kind of had this underlying uh, harmonic thing going through, but it didn't change the melody, so that stayed the same. And in the important parts of the melody, it kind of goes back to the original. So at least those little mile markers in the tune were, were kind of grounded in the original harmony. In the tune, the original tune's in C, mm -hmm. we, do it, we do it in E flat. Uh, so I was able to kind of create something that sort of sounded like it made sense coming out of what I had written harmonically, but also was kind of holding true to the simplicity of, of the song. Um, and uh, many people don't know this because I tell the story often about how uh, I fell in love with an Alan Ferber tune, a um, member of my band. He wrote a tune for his non-net years ago, then for his big band, and I found it that way. And that was what the reason why I wanted to learn how to improvise. And so I made the band, but it was actually a, a gig that we did together for the Gen Conference, the Jazz Education Network Conference in 2016, that sort of uh, showed me what a trauma quartet could be outside of the traditional sense that I had experienced coming up the classical route. So um, we did this trombone quartet. Yeah, it was for the company we both represent. Uh, we play their instruments, Exo Brass. And uh, they were doing a special promotional concert at the Gen Conference, and they wanted to feature four of their artists with a rhythm section. And so I wrote four charts, and Paul McKee wrote a couple of charts, and we performed those six tunes at the Gen Conference in, what, 2017? 2016. 16. Mm -hmm. And, and that was kind of where I got the idea to do four trombones with rhythm section because John wrote uh, two of the tunes are on, on the album. On the album, uh, Impromptu three. and yeah. Softly as a Morning Sunrise. Correct. Yeah. yeah. Um, but had you written for trombone quartet with rhythm before? Uh, when I was in college, we had a trombone group that applied for a spot at the Notre Dame Jazz Festival. And I wrote one chart for that. But that was five trombones and rhythm section. But it wasn't really an original tune of any sort. It was kind of a, a kind of a reworking, kind of a transcription of two different versions of a tune, made it into one. Just because it. What was it? It was Love for Sale. Ah. Huh. Yeah. 
the other and then I did do some writing at when I was at Eastman I wrote a tune for 10 trombones and rhythm section really what was that one that was an original that, does it still exist should yeah where at Eastman yeah I would think so yeah huh Anyway, um, well, let's talk about the other tune. So the other tune is called Little Cupcake, which is um, a a funny name that he calls. He doesn't really call me this name, but it's whenever I say something off color, which is quite It's a often. sarcastic uh, <laughs> response to whenever she says something a little off color or unladylike, I guess. Who, me? <laughs> and I'll say, that's my little cupcake. Yeah. Some people write every day, and some people don't just write when the when the uh mood strikes them how do you write well it's not necessarily when the mood strikes it might be if i get inspiration or if if i have a deadline for something of course um but i've always considered myself first and foremost a player so if i'm going to put time in every day on something it's usually on my instrument and then if i have some spare time or spare spare time i uh i do some writing um and uh, many, I'm very honest and open about uh, my um, level of improvisation. I didn't start learning how to improvise until basically when the band was formed. And um, you taught me things, but because of... Well, I was the only person giving her guidance as to what to do and how to, how to read chord changes. and Because of how awful I am, I wouldn't necessarily say that I allowed him to teach well, me. Well, I don't, I don't think a spouse should be the teacher no. of the other you know, partner anyway, but but uh, I did what I could within limits. Uh, without, within my limits? I mean, <laughs> most teachers can kind of give you more than you can handle, and you just go home and go, how am I going to do this? But as a spouse, you do that, uh, you get a little backlash. <laughs> a little, a little backlash. Um, how glad are you that I am now in school learning? Well, all these after things? after two years of of giving her guidance, as she 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 said, that's correct. Uh, she put the band together, and then after we started playing gigs, she said, "I'd like to try and start soloing," and we recorded the album. What? few months well, later. Well, I, so, I soloed on the first gig. On, I on did the first solo gig. on the first gig. Yeah, but not as much as... No, no. Had, maybe I, twice I the whole night. I definitely, it was, yeah, it was yeah. much more um, regulated, yeah, shall we say. So, so we, I kind of kind of walked her through chord scale relationships. And, and you um, actually even crafted uh, the changes in impromptu to sort of be yeah, friendly I, to I, me. Yeah, in general, I, I wanted to make the chord changes something that would be that would sound like they were more complex than they are. So uh, there's a lot of commonality between some of those chords. So you can pretty much approach it with one scale with a couple modifications here or there. And that was helpful because I came up, I've said it before, the classical path. And really, you know, I could play my scales. I know that and I can build chords. I'm not an idiot in that ter in that respect, but trying to create something out of the, all that knowledge that I had was really hard. So he tried to make it easier and say, okay, well, you basically do this for these eight measures, but just don't do it here. Or, you know, or so. just change this one note here mm -hmm. or whatever. And, and it worked with those chords, but, and the chords sound somewhat complex uh, just because of the nature of the voicings and, and the quality of chords. But in general, it was pretty straightforward for her, and, and she could kind of feel liberated in a way that she didn't have to be constantly thinking about every little nuance of the chords changing and chord scales and upper extensions and all those types of things. How glad are you that I am going uh, to an actual um, jazz teacher, you know, an educational Well, setting. yeah, since you signed up for your master's degree and, and you're studying improv, uh, it's been helpful because you'll get guidance from someone else and then she can come to me and say, I don't either I don't understand this or do you have another take on this that I could maybe try to apply in a different way and get the same result. So it, it's better that way, acting as a consultant rather than a teacher. It's been nice, too, because, uh, you know, I'm trying to learn specifics and learning how to play all the changes of a tune when John will come along and just be like, well, just mostly playing B flat here. But really it came down to the same thing I've told her since the beginning. If you're just playing nice melodies and, and it, there's some beauty to what you're playing, then, then it doesn't matter 
how intricate you are as, as far as what you're playing. And, and she plays really nice melodies. That's been super helpful. If anyone is jazz curious out there, it's been really helpful to have that kind of sentiment behind what I'm doing because I don't, I, one, I don't have the desire to play super fast or super high or super low, you know, I just want to say something. Yeah. I want to be able to say something. I want to be able to play what I hear. And um, uh, the idea that if what I play is beautiful, it's worth listening to has been super powerful yeah, for me. Yeah, I think simplicity is underrated, even with advanced players. Yeah. The other thing I would say is just as, as producer of the date, there were challenges because of COVID. And uh, we were lucky that uh, we were able to figure it all out. I was doing some remote recording of some big bands here in New York and uh, some of the music was really tricky and I thought, you know, when I was recording it, by the time I was done recording it for the person, I realized I really know this chart pretty well. So I told Jen, I said, why don't we, why don't we try to re rehearse that way? We can, I'll make MIDI tracks for everyone to listen to and then as they record them, we'll subtract those and have more live people. And by the time we did that to all these tunes, which by the way, more than half of them we didn't receive until after the pandemic was in full swing. Yeah, yeah, so I think we, we hadn't only even had played four, it. so I think we got six in yeah, the middle so, of the pandemic. Yeah, so, so we hadn't played any of the music together, and we knew we weren't going to have rehearsals because of COVID, so it was the only way to do it, and it actually worked out really well, and uh, everybody learned their music, and we did one, two live gigs before. Two live gigs. And everybody had, you know, within reason. Without rehearsal. Had, had a pretty good uh, sense of what we needed to do. Everyone had a vision of what the music was supposed to sound like. And uh, the only challenge after that was that uh, Nate couldn't be in the room with us for the recording. So yeah. he recorded remote. So I was playing the lead parts, and then Alan and Jen were on third and fourth. So there was this giant gap of an interval between first and and third and many times they were kind of both in the low register so large gaps so i'm really grateful for uh not only everyone learning the music but the fact that jen and alan have really good sense of pitch so we were able to get everything in tune even with these wide interval gaps so uh when nate played he didn't have to kind of force uh, could fit intonation in. yeah yeah um, I think, uh, I mean, you win an award for MVP for the recording. And I, some people have given me, I think Alan might have given me credit for keeping us busy, but that was, you know, that was your idea to record remotely and send the tracks to and from each other. So. I, th I think it worked out. And there were a couple that we recorded and we and Jen decided she didn't want to include them on the album. And that's, well, that's the, yeah, part of the reason you rehearse. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just, it, it, I felt str stronger about other yeah. tunes. Yeah, so I think we got the best collection of music. And and then the mixing process was a little bit of a challenge too. But uh, That's been, the I, I think, one of the biggest challenges in COVID is because even with all this virtual stuff, uh, you start to see cracks in the foundation of your own playing, um, but also um, in terms of how we all feel time and articulations. We interpret the music differently that we see, even though we're all, it's generally the same, but um, when we would line it up, it wouldn't line up and people were breathing in weird places. And it's all stuff that we would have taken care of if we had been able to be in the same room together. And even on the record session, uh, everybody was there except for Nate. Uh, so we were all kind of feeling the phrasing and you know when you sit next to somebody you can kind of just get a sense for their phrasing or what they're going to do. And it's just their, their physical body. You can yeah. see what's going on when they breathe, and, how they breathe, how they phrase. I got to say Nate did a great job studying my tracks and, and trying to follow me as best he could but we still had to make some adjustments to make sure everything was phrased together. Even between us, that the the trombones that were there, because we had big giant baffles in between us just to make sure we were being COVID safe. So, um, you know, it, it was definitely a much bigger issue this time around than the first album. Yeah. And we had harder music, I think. And the first album we did in one day. This was two days. Yeah. Yeah. But, but it, it was uh, time well spent. It's yeah. going to be a great... I, I'm sure everyone out there is going to really dig it. Well, um, thanks, John, for Thank uh, coming downstairs to your man cave and letting me interview you. <laughs>